Hello, I'm Sister Lisa Peter, and I'm coming to you today on July the 9th, 2017 from Hazelwood, USA. And the topic of my devotional is Heaven Is For Real. I'll take off my glasses so I can read my notes. If you think that when you die, you die, and that's all, you're wrong. Eternally wrong. It's not just a mistake that you can change. It's permanent. In the Bible, we learn the story of Lazarus and Abraham. Now, this wasn't the same Lazarus and Abraham in other stories. These were two different people. But Luke 16, 19-31 in the King James Version, it says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried out and said, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy, thy lifetime receiveth thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so they that so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Isaiah 65 and 17 says, For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. Isaiah 66, 22 for as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. Second Peter 3.13 Nevertheless we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Revelation 21 and 1 And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. That's what we're talking about. Heaven is for real. And what he kept saying, and I stopped, I almost stopped and said something then. But um, you got, if you're not listening to your preacher, if you're not listening to what God is speaking to you, I know God is speaking through you through dreams and through different things in your life because God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. He is trying to get your attention one way or the other now while you have the chance. And he uses people like me and just your friends and neighbors, different people. You don't know, but he'll put the words in their, their mouth and put something, maybe a song you hear, something that you hear that will remind you, hey, I've got to do something about this. Today is the day of salvation. You know, this is God is calling on you. And while we're talking about heaven is for real, I got this book just this past week, a week or two ago anyway from the free library down here by our post office. We have a little place where we can put a book in and take one out. And this book has had a little bit of water damage. It might be why somebody got rid of it, I don't know. But I haven't read it all. This is where I'm at. <laughs> but I'll get ready to start chapter 10. Anyway, it's, I read the, the back of it and I got a little video clip on our playlist that uh, the boy and his father are, are gonna interview talking about the book. So I got the gist of it. <clears throat> And it was made into a movie also. It's called Heaven is for Real. And in it, this young boy talks, tells about his out-of-body experience when he had an appendix operation. 
He can see his dad in one room and his mom in another. He also claims he saw and talked to Jesus and saw other people that he knew. I don't know how much of this story is fact or fiction. I take it that it's that is as the father who wrote this book went from, wrote from what the kid said. Um, the people that were close to him, they believed him. They said that the stories he told were things that no one had told him. There was no way that he could have known this unless that um, that he did have this out of body experience. About he had another sister who had died and proof that the Bible is true, talking about Jesus and, and different things, you know. It's a very interesting read. So, that there is a life after this life. And one of our Pentecostal preachers, Brother Lee Stone King, he has a testimony that he died, he was clinically pronounced dead for 45 minutes. And they had shocked his heart, um, he had had a massive heart attack in um, Sydney, Australia. And they had shocked his heart 10 times, and he did not come back to life. And he was all... They already had him on the ambulances, carted him off, and um, scared the driver and the paramedic that was there with him when he came back. To, God breathed life back into Brother Lee Stone King, and he testifies. And he testified about this before the United Nations a couple of years ago. I'm not sure how many years it has happened now. It's been a few years back that this happened. But his tremendous testimony of this experience, he actually had this. He says he didn't see Jesus or see heaven when he died, like this little boy had said when he had the out-of-body experience. But Brother Stone King says Jesus wouldn't let him, because if he would have seen Jesus, he knew he would not have he would not have wanted to come back to life to tell the testimony of his healing, because you know that's what that's what we long for. Heaven will be, or Jesus will be what makes it heaven for us. When we see Jesus, that's what we lived our whole life for. That's what we want. Heaven is for real, and that's where we want to go. That's what we're working for every day. Because Jesus already paid the price on Calvary, but yes, he still wants us to obey and to live a separate a separate life and obey his commandments and be born again. He said you must be born of the water and of the Spirit, or you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Jesus said this. He told Nicodemus that in John chapter 3, verse 5. In John chapter 3, he tells that, um, that, that about what I'm just talking about. But anyway, heaven is for real. We've got to prepare. Now is the time that we've got to prepare our lives to make it to that holy city. So you, no sin cannot enter there. No sin can enter there. And this week, Thursday night, my husband, Timothy Mark Peter, I got Timothy Mark Peter because on my, um, my note, when I type that, it, it tags to his page. But this Thursday... My husband, he was driving to work and had a front tire blow out. We knew that the tires were getting worn, that he needed to change them soon. You know, we always put off because we know that's an expense. We don't want to, we don't want to make that expense. We don't want to take the money out of our budget to do that. But it's a miracle of God that he did not wreck or suffer any harm. On Friday, as I was with him, we was getting a new tire put on. And um, he'd went, the tire that had blown, he went and got another tire and replaced it. But... We still had the other bad tire on the front. But I, as I was driving the van, he he said I had to drive one of the vehicles to pick up or the van. And I, I the one that spoke up and said I wanted to drive the van. But as I'm in there, I'm like, oh, how foolish can I be? Here I am. The tire just got put on, hadn't been balanced yet, and the other tire's bad. It's like, man, I may have an out-of-body experience. I may be in the hospital before the night's over, you know, because that big God kept his hand on us and it didn't happen. But I'm just, you know. Um, we got the van tires fixed, and we're doing fine, praise God. And we had another testimony this week. My daughter Melanie told me that my one-year-old granddaughter, Raylan, fell off the porch um, this week. It just happened so fast. But she landed, you know, even though I'm sure she was hurt, she was jar startled, um, she landed in the dirt, not in the bushes, not in the rocks. You know, she could she didn't hit her head against the, the stucco building, her, the wall. So many things could have happened that they didn't. And Melanie even said, as, I, as she was telling me, I was thinking that, but she even said, Mom, it's as if an angel had picked her up and carried her to the softest landing. And I believe it. I believe it with all my heart. I believe it. I believe that God is keeping his hand upon my children and upon my family. They're so far from me. They're miles and miles from me. And it, sometimes they say, Mom, you never answer your phone. What if I got hurt? I said, Honey, if you got hurt, I couldn't do anything. I'm so far away. 
But I pray every day that God keeps his protective hand upon my children, upon my grandchildren. And he hears me. My mom's in Ohio. She's far from me. But I pray for her and dad every day, you know, because it's God. And they tell me all the time, testimonies, how God had kept them and been with them. I know it is. And this lesson is about heaven, about the afterlife. And I'm discussing the importance of eternal salvation. But I can't just talk about that. It's hard to just talk about heaven our future home without mentioning God's hand and protecting angels in our everyday today living the here and now we don't even know we know these few things that's why we have these testimonies our tests give us testimonies our trials give us triumphs you've heard me talk about that before but we don't even know all the things many times every day that God has kept us what could happen and doesn't what he allows to happen, like my granddaughter falling off the porch, he allows some things to happen to show us that even in life, the trials and tests, that he is bringing them through us. And like my husband's tire blowing, and yet he didn't get hurt. You know, things are going to happen. Life is going to happen, but God is still with us there every step of the way. And it helps us to prepare our hearts in faith and in love to get us ready for eternity. You know, there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. We've got to remember the story about Abraham and Lazarus and the rich man that we don't even know his name. But we've got to choose this day who we will serve. And like I already mentioned, John 3, 5 says, Unless we're born again, we cannot see the kingdom of God. Being born of the water, that's being baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And being filled with the Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Christ in us, the hope of glory. That gospel message that I always share, if you listen to me every week, you're going to hear this every week because I don't know. Somebody might only hear this for one time, and I've got to. It's my duty, the whole gospel to the whole world. The gospel message I must always share is that preached by Apostle Peter on the day of Pentecost when the church was born. The church, what was good back then, is what we still do today. What was required of them is required of us. It doesn't change. Matthew 28, 19, when Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach this gospel to baptize him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. He's talking about his name. He's talking about the name of Jesus Christ. For there is no other name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. You know, this is that global missions. This is what it is for you and for me and for our children. I'm getting ready to tell that too. It's to every race and every nation. Acts 2, 1 through 16, Acts chapter 10, and Acts chapter 12, right there. Because in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost was poured out, the Lord added to the church daily so that it should be saved. And this shows in Acts chapter 2, 1 through 16, it was on the Jews. The Jew, the Jew nation, there was Jews from out of every nation was there in Jerusalem. And they saw this, and this happened to them. They received the gift of the Holy Ghost with the speaking of other tongues. And Acts chapter 10. And Acts chapter 12, the Samaritans and the Gentiles, it was poured out on them, because God is no respecter of person. Acts 2, 36 through 39 says, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter, unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? It's going to take an action. The book of Acts is actions. Something is going to happen in your life. There's going to be a change in your life. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. That means to turn from your sins. Not just being sorry you got caught. You're sorry that you have not lived in accordance. You Now that you're finding out, maybe before you didn't know, maybe it was in ignorance, some of the stuff you was doing, you didn't know you was doing wrong. But now you repent and you get baptized. Baptism, that is being immersed in water. You're going down. It's semiotic. I do sign language. And the, the, for baptism, I got my thumbs here. This represents a person. And they go down in the water. Down. They're being buried. They come back up. A new creature in Christ Jesus. The old things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's speaking in other tongues. In this past week, our camp meeting was in Tennessee. Uh, our Tennessee camp meeting was in Nashville area, Murphy's Bureau, I think. But anyway, I listened online, and he was on um, the preacher there. He was talking about how 
the Bible, when Jesus said, the wind bloweth where it's listeth, and you hear the sound thereof, you don't know where that wind's coming from, but you hear it. He said, the same is those that receive the Spirit. I wish I looked up that verse because I wanted to quote it right. But he was saying, you're going to hear something. And Brother Mark Morgan, he was preaching, he said that this translates to phonetic, uh, phonics. Uh, it had a word, it comes phonics. You've got to get hooked on phonics. When you speak in tongues, you're speaking in, this is phonetically, you are speaking praises to God. You are receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost with evidence. Just like on the day of Pentecost, there was a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set up on each of them. See, that's what it is. All the Bible, it fits to piece, the pieces that you're not sure. Just keep on reading. Keep on studying. It's going to come together. And that's what I try to do sun, on Sundays. When God gives me a theme, I try to put it together and tell you that it's for, um, verse 39, Acts 2, 39. For the promises unto you, he talked to them on the day of Pentecost. He was talking to them. He says, for you, but I'm pointing to, to you because it's also for you and for your children. You may not have children, but what it means back then, it was every generation for you and for your children and to all that are far off, the ones that was there in that room that day, the ones that got it in these other chapters that I was talking about, these other things, and a far off generation, years and years from now, from then. It's been 2,000 years, and God's still pulling out, pouring out this, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And that's what he's doing. He's calling. He is calling you to this experience. Because, like I already said, he's no respecter of persons. It's for me, it's for you, and it's for your children, your neighbors, your friends. It's for everybody that you come in contact with. Your, you know, if you don't have children, you may have children. You may have spiritual children. You know, we are mothers and fathers in Christ that we have spiritual children. That God gives us souls that we are. So see, it's still your children. But don't ignore the call. The voice of Jesus is speaking to your heart. This life is temporal, but the soul is eternal. Make the right choice today. Find a church in your area that preaches the truth. You can find one using the church locator under resources on the upci.org website. You can learn more about my husband and I at hazelwoodusa.weebly.com and our blog, thenpetersaid.wordpress.com. We have a playlist on YouTube. And under the Mark Peter channel, and it's the one that looks like a guitar made out of trees. So scroll down through there. We do not debate, argue, or compromise the gospel. Ephesians 4 and 15, but speaking the truth in love, do all things without murmuring and disputing. And I've already went over my time today. I was going to tell about the books I got in the book review, for the book review. But I did on my puppets today. So if you watch my puppets, you'll get it on there. God bless you. You have a wonderful day. Find a church. Get saved. Amen. Bye-bye.